For those of you who have followed my videos over a period of time, you probably have heard a lot of these texts that have been coming out concerning before the foundations of the world, before the foundations of the world, which is addressing this matter of the kingdom of the continuous found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, 64. This is proof text. Imagine that. I know an individual, one of my subscribers, had asked someone about this uh, before the foundations of the world, and the person never heard tell of it. I said, hey, it's all written through our scriptures. You're going to find there's quite a few scriptures that address this before the foundations of the world. What was there? It was a kingdom that was not made by human hands. It's held in reserve, and you'll be hearing this throughout this biblical text, the letter, which, uh, as I said, any skeptic should be put to silence with these scripture texts. But better yet, ask your father. He'll give you the living words of all this. So let me get into that. Here's the text, if you've heard me express it before, in Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Who has saved us, past tense, and called us for the holy calling, that comes up before the foundations of the world, not according to our works, so it couldn't be our works. What kind of works that? There were works there you did there. You understand that? But according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us when? In Christ. Jesus. What he would accomplish and express 2,000 years ago when he was among us, the Son of God as the Son of Man, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. It's locked up in you. It takes the Holy Spirit to work it out. All this coming out, all these other videos. Titus chapter 1, verse 2. In hope of eternal life with God that cannot lie, promised. When did he promise this? Before the world began. What did he promise me? No. Yeah. Yeah. When you talk about these uh, occult ideas of pre existence and all that, don't let that devil scarecrow keep you from this resurrected corn of the land of promise before the world began. Don't let the devil do that. People go all kind of label you. I'm not a Mormon, I'm not a Jehovah Witness, I'm not a inclusionist, I'm not a uh, universalist. Any of these, they, they, they get one label and they have to find another level because they can't probe, a spiritual man can't be probed or known. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship. We were created in Christ. Now he has to work that out to express it in a material, creative world. For we are his workmanship, created, should have been manifest. That word, I always brought that out. In the Hebrew text, the word create and make, they get debates going over that. The word create and make is bara, uh, asa. Get past that. You're not adding to or taking away from what the Bible is saying. You'll find it expresses it better by using that word manifested. For we are his workmen, created or it should have been manifested. Our being sons of God and not fallen sons of men, his offspring, created after our ideas of image. Not after our stupid ideas of image. In a fallen carnal mind, fallen soul's mind, some particular race, culture, secular religious creed, or opinion of gender, and all the distortions that's coming out today. Not created if there are ideas of image, but in Christ, unto good works, which God had ordained, for, before ordained, and we should walk in it. It's locked up in you, ready to be worked out. Who you are and your specific task and purpose in his life. That's what Paul meant when he said to his church, God, what do you have you haven't received? And you received it. How can you boast in the Lord you ain't received it? One plants, one waters. But he who plants, he who waters nothing. Apart from God giving you the ability to plant and water, you couldn't do that. God gives the increase. 
You want to preach for God? You got to give up on his human efforts. You go with what God preordained that's locked up in you and wait till your spirit for him to work this out. All right? I have asked all who read the above proof, when were you considered in Christ? Was it some particular date and created time? Or some particular religious service that would differ according to their self-will religious mindset of their fallen carnal mind, overriding the mind of Christ, which is clearly revealed to be a mystery hidden in the mind of our Father and said to be in all, Jew and Gentile, available to all who are willing to let go of what they have been taught by the doctrines of men which block what their father of their spirit, eternal spirit, could have revealed to them, having it worked out of them by the Spirit of God, left by Jesus, the Son of God, expressing the will of God our Father while he was in the mood of the Son of Man. You've heard it plainly revealed by Paul the Apostle to his young student, Timothy, in the above text, repeated again here, I'm going to repeat it again. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Who have saved us, past sense, and called us with a holy coin, not some made-up idea of coin by the egocentric human mind, which, could be, which would be a self-effort work of promoting oneself and its purposes when it is clearly written, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, his eternal purposes. So when, so when does it say that all this was given to us in Christ, which was given to us in Christ, Jesus, what he accomplished before the world began, what he accomplished, what he expressed, this manifestation of the mystery. There's this also. We have to be, be in Christ and understand what it means to be in Christ in order for our Father's work to be given to us. Think about that with the mind of, of your spirit. Not your carnal mind, you can't understand this. Your carnal mind can't even imagine this. I ask you, can it get any plainer than this? It clearly says that this was given to us in Christ before any idea we may have come up with in our self-willed religious ideas. All of this was given in grace, which is clearly defined as unmerited favor, an eternal gift that our Father gave to us without being eternally begotten in Christ. Also, this grace is something we did not earn nor deserve without being naturally born, cut off from our sonship, unaware who we were to be manifested as, and our coming or going with our self-created ideas as a son of or daughter of man. Hebrews chapter 1 from the Amplified Bible really reveals the finished work of God before all things, before the expression of the eternal Mind of God our Father was expressed, expressed through the Word, the Son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord. God's final Word in His Son. Now understand this. This mind of Christ in us was a hidden mystery to those in the Old Testament times. They didn't understand it. This final Word manifested through the Son of God while in the mood of a son of man with us, demonstrated this eternal fact of this same mind being all and in all, as Paul reveals. Give my series, the mind of Christ. Jesus, in the mood of a son of man, clearly manifested this. While in the mood like us, yet virgin born, he revealed what was in all as sons of men, yet our being fallen from this mercy, only knew what we knew as sons of men. After the Christ. Yeah, under this mask as a son of man, 
we are sons of God. Get in my surgery. Address the mask. A mask of flesh that hides who you truly were. Your true identity. You're the offspring of God. Unaware, no one's ever told you. And God's your eternal Father. Hebrews chapter 1, the Amplified. Let's hear it now. From expanded Greek from this chapter. God, having spoken to the fathers long ago in the voices and writings of the prophets in many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth. They didn't have it all. Remember, a lot of this was a mystery to them. They would get it and they'd be scratching their head trying to understand it, debating about it, right? And in many ways, has in these last days spoken with finality to us in the person of one who is by his character and nature his son, namely Jesus, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, to whom also he created the universe, this material stage upon which we would express our sonship. He created the, the universe, that is, the universe as a space-time-matter continuum. Temporary model. That's why we want to have a steadfast long gauge by the things seen. They're temporary. Focus on the eternal purpose is why you came into this material world. The sun is the radiant and only expression of the glory of our awesome God Reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light being, the brilliant light of the divine, and the exact representation and perfect imprint of his Father's essence, and upholding and maintaining and propelling all things, the entire physical and spiritual universe, for his powerful word, carrying the universe along to its predetermined goal. Predetermined goal. It has a purpose. It has a beginning, we'll have an end. But it has an eternal purpose. This womb that we're in. When he, himself, and no other, had, by offering himself on the cross as a sacrifice for sin, accomplished purification from sins and established our freedoms from guilt, he sat down, revealing his complete work. Completed work. Once for all, it's finished. And not, you not could ever done. He did it all. At the right hand, the majesty on high, revealing his divine authority, having become as much superior to angels, since he had inherited a more excellent and glorious name than they. Don't follow some angel Maroni or somebody, huh? Mormons. Excellent and glorious name than they, that is, Son, the name above all names. God, God, I have videos on that. Kenneth Weasley, in Greek tra translation, said the focus is not on the name Jesus. The focus is on the name. That's when you hear me pray. I pray, Father, to the name of Jesus and all that that name represents. All that that name represents. It's called the name. It was given out in proportion before the, because of the mystery until the fullness of time the manifestation of the Son of God in the mood of a Son of Man, Jesus Christ our Lord. And after his death, burial, and resurrection, which the Apostle Paul was commissioned to reveal, the mystery of godliness, greatest mystery of godliness, hidden before the creation of time, the manifestation of the sons of God, eternally begotten in Christ, this was held as a mercy waiting to be revealed our Father's desire to manifest His eternal sons in material created body and world, revealing the kingdom of God on earth, called the kingdom of heaven, as it was in what we call the eternal heaven, the kingdom of the continuous. This model is expressed. Even during my life, a thousand year reign, the whole series of videos on that. It's just a model. And you better know what you're talking about because you're going to be teaching those in resurrected body, you can be in a resurrected body with the mind of Christ and the same mind that had in Jesus. You're going to be teaching those born during that thousand year reign of Christ on earth. 
and you're going to be preparing them for the kingdom of the continuous, because this millennium will only last a thousand years. It's a temporary model of the coming eternal kingdom. You've got to know the comparison and teach these people during that time. Romans 11.2, God had not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Were ye not what the scripture said of Elijah, how he maketh intercession of God against Israel, saying, well, the focus was on who he foreknew. He foreknew you. Now, don't go with Calvin and his crazy ideas. Throwing out the free will man. No, you got a free will. You accept what's being shared here in scriptures and what Christ and the apostles and the prophets all preach. And then listening to your father to explain to what these people got to the mind of Christ in them, aware and unaware, he foreknew you. Do you want to know him? And the power of his resurrection? That's up to you. You got a free will. So Calvin's ideas get thrown out the window. You have a free will. You can accept this or reject it. Romans 8 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He was the seed that fell on the ground. That kernel wheat that fell on the ground died. And as it were, was like a seed planted in the ground, he raised many sons. For one came many. That's why you were created in Christ. Or to be manifested in Christ. And that word creation, he disturbs all. Like it wasn't there, now it's it was there. No, it's always been there. God's eternal desire to have sons, eternally always had them. We just see it manifest in time, space, and material world. That birth, that eternal birth. First Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Who very was foreordained before the foundations of the world, but were manifested in these last time for you. The fullness of time. Foreordained. Predestined. Foreordained. Complete understanding, he knows the Alpha Mag, he knows the beginning from the end. And even the so called disruption of the kingdom of the continuous, I have it in that series that comes out, seeing this as a disruption. He's taking this so called disruption, fall of Adam, and he works it to his good. That's coming out in these videos. How can he work all of these things to his good? Ask him. He could take your whole life and take your straw. You would hand stubble you, you spun out. Take your straw and spin your straw to gold, silver, and precious stones. Work it to his good. So here for the skeptic, coming out of the strong concordance, right? Get into the Greek of stuff. Here it is. I'm not going. I'm not going to pretend to be a Greek scholar. For those of you who think you are, or you know someone that is, tell them. Here, what's this all mean? To know beforehand. For new, to know beforehand. Definitely to know beforehand, I know beforehand, for no. Here's some more Greek. Maybe it's just Greek to you, but it ain't to them. I've only had a couple of years of Greek in school. I didn't do too well as a Greek scholar. I'm not a Greek scholar. Just view that. Strong's, again, number 4, 4267. Well, for the skeptic, you can pause that or go back, study it, or look up in Strong's. There's lots of records on the web. And you can debate it to the cows come home. I'm not going to debate it. I prefer the living word of God. But I do this sometimes just for the skeptic. They want to know, where's that in the Bible? Or 
What's the Greek or Hebrew have to say about it? Well, there it is. You do what you want to do. I'll stick with what the Father says to me. I remember I complained to him about it. I said this to him. I said to him, these things are the brilliant thing I've ever heard in my research, in my library and books here, all my theology books. I complained to God was, why me? I'm no Hebrew or Greek scholar. He who hears you now catches reply. That's why. They can't hear this. If you have wanted to know, so now you know. That's the living word of God. But people always need that confirmation, backing. What do the scholars say? Go off, search the scriptures, see if these things are true. Uh, for a long time, I did that. I would get these thoughts, and I'm saying, my God, this sounds like heresy. Where's this coming from? What demons feeding these thoughts to me today? It ain't the demonic. So I replied back to them, who would believe what's being shared? Just come out, Paul Woodward, who's he? Is there anyone that could or, or knows these matters besides me? If a Hebrew or Greek scholar ever stumbled upon what I've shared in this series, would they seek to debunk what's been shared? Here's the Father's reply. Don't worry about it. Just share it. That's what I'm doing. I'm just sharing it. Without worrying about what they're going to say or think. So I would do, as I've been told to do, share what I've been, I'm claiming is coming from not only my father, but the father of us all, aware or un unaware. Ask him. Take it for what's worth to you. Then go and ask your father, then wait to your spirit without consulting some uh, scholar or going through some book. Wait. Give him time to cleanse your mind from what you thought you knew. And you'll start getting these strange thoughts, strange teachings. They're coming from your father. And don't worry about some devil or demon. He'll keep all lies and deception far from him. He's promised that. If you're wrong, he'll let you know. So, back to what I had, had notes here. For what the Greek is saying, and all the Greek tenses and all, if you understand I understand some of it. This clearly expresses the free will of humanity and our Father's pre-knowing us according to His will. Not my will, thy will be done. Remember Jesus saying that in the garden? He didn't go with His carnal flesh. And this knowing was more than just a thought, but a living experience of knowing those He foreknew. An intimate matter, like the Hebrew word for new. I think the Hebrew word there with yeah, Adam knew his wife is Yada. Adam knew his wife. It was an intimate knowing that produces. Have this intimate relationship with your father. Sadly, men may view this figure and think that it is universalist teaching, inclusionist teaching, or agnostic teaching, and many other falsely labels, they think this video is sharing it. It's not, believe me, it's not, it's not heresy. It's not any of these labels and teachings. These are not more than scarecrows that keep you from this kind of teaching. Remember, the mystery was revealed. As soon as Paul revealed it, he was already twisting it, distorting it. <clears throat> The reason it isn't is because not everyone will receive this. If it was Gnostic teaching, you know, <laughs> everyone's going to receive it. Or like universal teaching, Gnostic teaching for the only they have the truth. No, it's clearly written that the same minds in all of us, Jew and Gentile, it's available to all. There's no reason you don't have to, can't know it, you can know it. So this reason isn't because not everyone can receive this, prove that not all get so-called saved, rejecting the truth of our being the sons of God, begotten in Christ, at the image of the first eternally begotten Son of God, 
Thus our sons in our awakened human spirits by the Holy Spirit be with this same mind that was in Jesus, the Son of God, who came into our fallen experience, unfallen, as the Son of Man called in Scripture the second Adam, who took away his fallen sin nature that the first Adam had created, which we all would have inherited if, now here it is, if the Son of God did not do what he had done to take the sin nature and nail it to his cross. The Lamb of God takes, takes away the sin nature of Adam. Demonstrating in time is the eternal fact of his once for all act before the foundations of this world that offered his life for our fallen life. One man, Adam, got us into this mess. One man, Christ Jesus our Lord, got us out of this mess. His finished work accomplished that which we could have never done. Our being born to an un, to an, to a fallen Adam required our being born in another way first. Hear that? Our being born to a fallen Adam required our being born in another way first. This is, now here's that multi expression we see a lot of religious people quoting about being born again. The deeper translation of John chapter 3 clearly reads, you must be born again now, with this second birth, having the same source as the first. When was I first born? You must be born again with the second birth, having the same source as the first. This first birth was through our being eternally begotten in the eternally first begotten Son of God, reject this, and you're left with your natural birth of being born through this foreign first Adam, and you trotting underfoot what the second Adam accomplished for you, reconciling you back to your eternal Father. Did you just hear that? If not, back it up. Hear it again. Ponder it. I not only speak, I have the scroll of words there for you to read. And if you need it, I'll send it to you. Well, that gives you some clear ideas of what this eternal matter is all about. Our being eternally begotten in Christ, which many people say sounds like strange teaching. Yeah, it is strange. To a carnal, self-willed, religious mind, you can't hear it. So I beg of you, ask your Father. If you have that mind in you, let your carnal mind go and wait to your spirit for the Father to speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. He will. He can. He said he would. He knew Old Testament prophets knew, but he didn't understand it. He knew he was talking to prophets. But one day he wanted to talk to all. One day with worship and spirit and truth. And no man had to say, no, the Lord, because all would have known him from the least to the greatest. With that same mind, being able to ask your Father and wait to your Spirit and have that worked out of you by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's teaching would be that of His Father, our Father, not His own. Any Spirit that's trying to teach you independent from the Father, you've seen that, angels claiming to be expressing the Word of God. More McCall does that. And Judge B named Moroni, the golden tablets. You know, don't angel of heaven preach anything up to you other than this. But Christ is often expressed to the letter and now through his living word, to your spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, coming from your Father, through the Son. The Word, the living Word. The words you spoke were spirit and they were life. And the words that you get will be spirit and they will be life for you and for those that hear you speak. God bless.